the new cache is losing its greenery. Those early previews at ESL New York had strong colour correction to make the greens pop and to stain those concrete surfaces yellow, as well as having more green moss on the walls. This was already gone by the time it reached the game, but since then it has had five different versions, and each tones the colours down further and removes yet more of the details. It's gradually becoming the old cache again, although you can see it still has some way to go. The one we currently have in the game already has the biggest changes, but there's an even newer version that's currently on F Pwn's workshop, which removes even more. With this latest version, the trims and darker bits have been brightened, and the green further stripped from the walls and floors. Places that used to be quite green are now quite grey. I'm sure it plays better than ever, but I'd be lying if I was happy about these changes. It's a shame to see the map visually becoming just a ghost of its former self. There are good reasons for why this should be done. Frame rates on this map were low when it was first released, and no doubt these various optimizations have helped to make the map's performance more acceptable for many players. I quickly tested a few of the most demanding spots on my slowest PC and, when compared with the map at release, the latest version is 8% faster on average if CPU limited and 9% if GPU. You have to decide whether that's worth the changes to the graphics. I'm not going to bother doing an in-depth test again as I'm sure you're all bored of that by now, but just know that the frame rates you can expect from this map have only gotten better. Also, I think that, before a level is released, mappers have a tendency to chuck everything at the project to see what sticks. Then as time goes on and as players grow familiar with the map, the mapper gets a better idea of what's important to keep and what can be discarded. And of course, with the introduction of custom player models last year, it meant that maps needed to be adjusted to make these new characters stand out against the backdrops. A few locations and other maps were also changed, like this green spot on Overpass, but Cache with its striking colour palette was particularly affected by this and I'm sure that improving visibility has greatly influenced the direction these updates have taken. Because you don't want a pay to win element in CSGO, like if custom player models camouflage better than stock ones, giving those players an advantage. But where to draw the line? The issue is bigger than Cache, I'm seeing a large contradiction with the direction the game as a whole is heading. To say that graphics are important is an understatement. It's now a requirement for a map to be beautiful, for it to even be considered for inclusion in CSGO. Just last week I showcased the maps which have made it to the final stages of the Map Core 2019 competition, each with a distinct theme and gorgeous details. These days there are so many maps vying for our attention that we can be picky enough to drop any that don't look exceptionally beautiful. In fact, let's use Map Core's judging criteria to see what people look for in a map. They split it into four equally weighted categories – Fun, Setting, Graphics and Polish. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that Polish only relates to gameplay, and not to the graphics in the slightest. So that splits the score 50-50 between how good a map is and how it looks. You could be mistaken for assuming that graphics are half of the CSGO experience. Yet, once these maps are featured in the game, if cash is anything to go by, then gameplay takes top priority and the graphics need to be toned back until it has no bearing on how it plays anymore. Isn't it stupid that there's a conflict between what is required to get a map into the game and what's needed to keep it there? Don't get me wrong, I appreciate graphics and gameplay, I just wish there was a way of having both. And for a while we did. Having set character models per level allowed for mappers to pick a class that stood out well against the map's backdrops. In this way, the game actually allowed for more graphical variety than earlier Counter-Strikes did which would let you choose any character model on any level. But late last year, Valve changed the rules when they allowed players to be able to pick their own character models again. The decision to introduce these is Valve prioritising graphics, and possibly money, over gameplay. And maps like the new Cache have suffered from this. I am sure the map was fine with the player models that F Pwn had picked. It's just that when Valve rolls out such a large new feature to a 7 year old game less than a month after a map like Cache is introduced, then of course it's going to need emergency changes to keep it playable. The changes on this map are particularly noticeable because Cache was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but I feel the direction these updates have headed shows the far-reaching implications a seemingly unrelated change to another part of the game can make. At the end of the day, these custom character models are just another thing that mappers will have to consider, on top of everything else that's required to make a CSGO worthy level. And while the player models are more fun than ever, I feel the worlds they inhabit will be just that little bit bleaker.